using communication for intimacy. Hi, I'm Beck from Be Free Emotional Fitness Training, and I support women and girls to become emotionally stronger. And I'm Vern from Move Forward Mentoring, and I specialize in male mentoring, helping boys and men find their passion, speak from their heart, and build better relationships. And together we are Rekindling Relationships. We work with couples through mentoring sessions, as well as facilitating communication and creative workshops to build deeper connections. Welcome to our podcast designed to help you strengthen and bring more fun into your partnership, as well as create a more loving, healthy and strong connection. Hello, everyone. Hey, everyone. And now we're in our third episode of When Couples Need Communication. And this one's about intimacy. Interesting topic, this one. We love talking about intimacy, don't we? No, some of us more than others. Well, I think we love talking about it together, but when we get <laughs> you on the mic, then all of a sudden, you seem to stop talking I'm as much. getting better. <laughs> I'm trying. No, no, you're great. You're great at this. This is a hard conversation to have. People get really awkward. It actually makes me think of us trying to talk about, not intimacy, but talk about sex education with our teenagers and how awkward they are. And that's like talking about it with teenagers, like talking about it in couples. It can be just as awkward depending on your background, can't it? Absolutely. You can also feel a bit offended, feel a bit uncomfortable about this. Are they like criticizing uh, like intimate connection? Oh, so when someone has a conversation, when someone... Well, yeah, well, if your partner brings it up, like we need more intimacy. Yes. And you're like, oh. You almost feel criticized straight away. Well, you can. I mean, mm. you can if you're not up for that conversation or especially how that conversation happens. Like out of the blue, someone saying, hey, this, you go, well, where'd that come from? That seems like a slam. That seems like someone's having a bit of a go as opposed to, hey, I would really love for us to have a conversation about intimacy together mm. so that we grow closer. I think I've felt like that in the past where it's been like, you know, intimacy, the subject of intimacy has been raised and I've felt like, oh, like picking on me. <laughs> in what sense? What, what, would be, what would be talked about? I'm thinking about my relationship that I was in for 20 odd years. It would be more like, oh, are they like they're telling me that there's not enough intimacy in our relationship. I'm not being affectionate enough. And so I guess I felt more criticized, but that's my own stuff. I'm not saying they put it across like that, but you can feel criticized about the way you are in a relationship. And then you get offended. I'm sure in the past there have been times when someone said, you know what, maybe we could take things a little bit slower. And, and I'd be like, oh, hang on a second. Um, are they saying that I do things too fast? Or am I, you know, are we talking premature ejaculation here? It's a sensitive topic. It's a super sensitive topic. And I think the reason why intimacy and sex is a sensitive topic is because we as a society are not open about talking about it. It's not easy to talk about. I think also that there's a lot of expectations that you have to be perfect at it. But, but as society, I think we put that on ourselves. Yeah, but I think that's because we actually haven't been having these conversations at all. Mm. There's some countries like Scandinavia or Finland where they're talking about intimacy and sex. As pe kids are growing up, they're having really good sex education in schools. I would say that by the time those people become adults, they're actually able to have a conversation about mm. it because they're used to it. We have very bad sex education at school. From parents. General. Parents or school education. <laughs> From yeah. both of them. Yeah. So I don't think anyone's ready for that conversation because because no one's ever been taught to have a conversation about it. Everyone's expected to just know, you've got the bits, just get the bits and put them together. <laughs> and then put it's them It's like apart. a puzzle piece. And yeah, the puzzle piece that you just keep on like just keep on putting it back in and out all the time and then it will work and it's it's actually deeper than There's that. very it? little education on it. And some people educate themselves by watching porn. Which is a terrible way to actually learn about intimacy because porn is, I feel, the opposite of intimacy. Mm. And that's something that we talk about with students is the fact that pornography is very much this physical act which is based on the dominance and the masculine and it's a movie. It's not real. It's not real. Intimacy is something very different to that. But we don't have that conversation. We don't have that conversation so people don't feel comfortable. And also people's sex drives differ and that can be potentially quite a big problem in relationships too. Mm. And talking about that is a hard conversation. Mm. We spoke about this on one of our podcasts called Different Sex Drives and about how difficult it can be to have this conversation, but it is still a vital conversation because mm. this is an aspect of a relationship where that physical closeness 
and understanding what each other wants and needs can bring people together. Likewise, not knowing what your partner needs, not knowing what your partner wants, being in that space for just selfish needs can pull people apart. This takes a lot of communication to get right. And I think, like you touched on, we expect to know how to do this naturally well without any guidance or education or direction at all. Mm. And it's not that easy. When I was living in Thailand and working as a tour leader, the local tour leader actually took us to this village and there was a hut at the beginning of the village as you walk in. And they're like, oh, this is the sex hut. And we're like, what? We're like, what do you mean, sex hut? Like, <laughs> this sounds really dodgy. And they said, this is where the boys of the village learn about intimacy from a special woman in the village. And that's their job. Their job is to teach these boys about intimacy before they get into relationships. Oh, wow. That's hmm. interesting. So yeah. would it be like an older lady that chats to them about how things work? I don't know if they just chat to them. Oh. I think there's more than that. I think it's actually t showing them how all the bits work as well. Like I felt like in that talking to them about it is like, oh, this is not just them sitting down going, okay, children, let's have a chat. We're talking about the older teenage boys who are stepping into that space actually having more of maybe a practical chat. <laughs> sounds so wrong. It sounds, it sounds so like wrong. you'd get arrested if you did it here. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it actually works. But – in one way, I get. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh I, I, God, where were you going with this? I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> At the front of a school, we, we have an old matron lady that. <laughs> oh, we have a sex hut. Sex education takes <laughs> oh place in this little portable at the front, <laughs> <laughs> and we've designated one of the staff. <laughs> oh, I would hate that job. <laughs> so what's my point? I don't do you, know, do actually. Want, do you want to know? Do you want to know where I'm going with this? Oh, please. In that Make village, it quick. In, <laughs> so uncomfortable. In that village, they're actually active, proactively teaching the youth about intimacy in their own way. I'm not saying it's the best way, but... <laughs> What I'm saying is that if we... Maybe a less practical way, maybe like less, less hands-on <laughs> and a more theory-based theory approach. Based. <laughs> just, just and a, a test at the end. Oh, God. <laughs> With a diagram. Okay. Oh, well, I'm a bit thrown by that one. Sorry. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So our education is very limited. Mm, yep. Our experience is expected to be know what we're doing. Mm. And when people are generally stepping into that sort of space when they're 15, 16, 17, like young as teenagers, uh. no idea. Some older, like, you know, you were 18, I was 15, but we, you know, have very different experiences in that space. But even so, when you first start off, you have no idea what you're doing. No. You know, and there's nobody to ask and there's nobody to tell you. So you're in a relationship. One person thinks it happens one way. One person thinks it might happen the other way. Well, you just have no idea. No idea. Maybe they just need to sit down. Okay, let's have a chat about what we like and what we don't like, what we want and what we don't want. Again, it's those open, frank conversations that are hard to have particularly about this topic. Isn't it amazing, though, if you have these conversations, and we have these conversations about our intimate space, that it actually brings us closer. Mm. Like me knowing what you like, what you want, how you want it, how many times you want it, where you want it. <laughs> Sorry, too much detail? I think very demanding. <laughs> it does sound demanding, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, <I'm> so exhausted. <laughs> Help. This is a call for help. <laughs> I think this, actually, humour is a really good part of That's it. That's so good. When you make this conversation about intimacy, make it serious, it's probably harder than it should be. But if it was fun hmm. and light, when it's not about making the other person feel that they're wrong or that you're not getting your needs met and it's their fault, hmm. when it's a light conversation about, hey, I actually really like this. What do you like? Mm. How can we how can we meet in the middle? How do where is there a compromise in spite of different sex drive perspectives? 
Where do we meet? Be curious, I think. That's a great one. Curious. Be, be a curious creature mm. and ask questions. And you can ask questions while you're even being intimate, in the mm. act of intimacy. For some reason, there's a belief that you've got to be very quiet. You know, you've got to just do the thing without talking to each other that mm. somehow by having a conversation, it's going to kill the spontaneity of what's going on. Mm. Well, I think if there's a really good discussion before mm. and conversation during, then it just enhances the whole experience. It's not about spontaneous, is exactly. it? And I think it's okay to try new things together or voice what you'd like to try together and then give it a go. And then if you don't like it, that's okay too. Yeah, never try, never know. It's another Thai expression that you yeah. brought home with you. My long, my roo. <laughs> never try, never know. And you're very good at trying things, aren't you, Beck? <laughs> <laughs> I love the expression on your face where you're just like, oh, don't know how to answer this. What advice do you give people that struggle to have these conversations? I think patience is really important in this space. It is an understanding of that, okay, things aren't maybe not matching, things mm. aren't maybe working. So let's have a sit down. Let's have a really, let's have a nice meal. Let's put sex on the table. Yeah, true. Make it the topic. Oh, I mean, actually have sex on the table, but. <laughs> Is that entree? After the dishes have cleared, like mains or dessert, you just leave the dishes there. I don't know. <laughs> so, topic of the table that that's a conversation. Maybe that's a date. Yeah, that's a good idea. Make your romantic date of it and talk about intimacy and what you would like, and ask them what they would like more of. Mm. How do you do that? Organize a romantic night out or at home, whatever, whatever you both like, and then talk about it prior to the act. What would you like to see more of? What do you like that I do? Mm. that you would like more of. One thing we've spoken about before is this great game where we put on a music playlist and then for a song, you get to tell the other person what you'd like happen to you. You know, that might just be, I just want a head massage. I want my back scratched. Um, I want my bum squeezed. That's a fun way to do it. Well, I get to, when we've played this, I get to know what you like. Mm. And in a sense, it's foreplay because what happens is you're doing to the person what they like rather than what you think they like. Yeah. And we can't always read each other's minds. And, and sometimes... Still, we can't always. We can't, <laughs> can't ever. <laughs> and some, sometimes they might like this, but then they might not feel in the mood for that today, you know? Like, yeah, things change. Because sort of thing. there's always consent as well. You've always got to ask for consent in, some, mm. in these spaces. Now, what are you okay with? What aren't you okay with? What do you reckon if people differ so much in this? Like, because you can imagine there would be people out there where their sex drives are so different or what they like. Like one might be really way out with what they like and the other one's much more reserved. Like how do you meet in the middle with that? I think it's little steps, isn't it? For example, let's say you're more inhibited than I am and so we're going to bring you out of your shell slowly. So we're going to do that bit by bit. So how about we try this? Yeah. And that means in some ways I tame down what I want mm. to match where you're at and we work towards meeting in the middle. So it's a slow progression. Mm. Good suggestion. <laughs> Sounds like he's speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> How about for people who have this real difference in sex drive because of stress or things going on outside the relationship and – how about for people who have really low libidos because of stress or medication or something that's happened in the past, so they have these really low levels of energy towards being in that space compared to their partner who might not be that? How do they meet? Well, I guess kind of like you said, isn't it? It's that little steps forward to cater to what's going on for each other. Also, intimacy doesn't have to be sex. No, it should actually be way before the bedroom, shouldn't it? Or way before the actual act of sex. There should be lots of intimacy anyway. That's right. And it doesn't have to be destination focused. And maybe if you take that away, that pressure away, then the other person that struggles with it a bit more might be more inclined because there's no destination and they can just have fun. So you're saying rather than focusing on the happy ending, you focus on the happy journey. <laughs> Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. It doesn't have to end. It doesn't. And I th think it's one thing I love about our relationship. We're always stopping each other for a kiss, having a hug. Every time I walk past to get my butt squeezed, there's this real sense of closeness, but also that it's like this feeling 
I get is that you want me. Mm. We don't have to be in the bed. It's just this natural thing. So when we do end up in the bed or anywhere, <laughs> then it's like a natural progression. Mm, it's like you know? we've been flirting a little bit up. Been, yeah, other. exactly. We've been mm. flirting and teasing each other and, mm. and that happens naturally over time to the point where when we do step in that space, it, it's like this slow, gentle foreplay mm. outside of that mm. sort of sexual space. And I really reckon if you take that destination focus out of it for people that are struggling to even really be in the mood, I think if you take that away and you do just have fun and relax together and just enjoy each other's company and do some edging where it doesn't need to end, doesn't need to have that destination, then they will start to enjoy it more because there's less pressure. Yeah, I like that. The idea of edging, which is you're sort of playing with each other and then leaving each other. You're not playing with each other to the point of having an orgasm or coming or anything like that. You're just playing, 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 playing. And then when it gets too heated, just stop. And that could happen for days or weeks if you want. Yeah. And then when you do get to that point. You're both ready, aren't you? You're both really ready, but it's even more heightened. More heightened. Because you've waited. And in that sort of slowly getting to know each other's body again maybe or getting slowly building that up you're starting to learn more about yeah. what that person likes as well and how they like to be in the space and i think you just brought up a point there that made me think about body image and this can happen particularly for women i think maybe after having kids they can feel less attractive and so that can hinder them wanting to be intimate. So that's something that maybe you can have a discussion about too. Mm, that's a hard discussion to have though, isn't it? Because there's a lot of having to be vulnerable and put yourself out there and say, hey, you know, I'm not very comfortable with my body. And I'm sure there are men like this as well who are like, oh, I'm not really comfortable with my body. And I don't feel maybe good attractive enough or, or attractive. Yeah, I want the lights off. I don't want to be seen. I would say personally, I actually want to see my partner. I'm not focused on what they see of themselves. Maybe one of those things happen is where people look at parts of their body. They see this. I'm not happy with this bit or that bit or that bit over there. I look at the whole body. There are men out there who might not know that their partner really struggles with their body and in their own head don't think about it. They're not looking at little parts of their partner's body. They're looking at the whole thing. Mm. I think there's a belief that their partner might be looking at certain parts of their body rather than their partner looking at the whole body. And when you have a conversation, maybe in that conversation, there's that time to go, look, I actually enjoy your body, but I want you to feel happy about your body. Mm. What can I do to make you feel better about your body? Mm. That's a good conversation. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, you the partner will still keep on going through the same old thing no matter what. Even if you don't talk about exactly what part of your body say, I'm not feeling comfortable with my body. How can we deal with this together? Mm. And then, you know, if knowing that and say, okay, well, what can I do? How can I help you with that? If you need the lights turned off, we'll turn the lights off. Maybe light some candles. We'll keep it dark. Maybe knowing that you don't like an aspect of your body, I might then pay more attention to it and enjoy it more so you can enjoy it more. Mm, yeah, nice. I think being slow and taking things slowly and pausing is probably one of the key things. You're not rushing it, saying, okay, let's take this as slow as possible. Let's really enjoy this space because we should enjoy this space. I mean, you know, it's one of the most beautiful things about being in a relationship is you get to have this intimate space and make sure we both enjoy this as much as possible. What else do you think we can do in this intimate space about sort of having these conversations? I think we covered it really well. I think having a sense of humour is really good. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take this topic too seriously. No, it shouldn't be too serious. No, and have fun with it, like that game that we play, which is each of you get to pick what you would like the other person to do for a song. That's fun. That's a really fun way to approach what you would like more in the in an intimate space. Mm. Having these open conversations at a different time to being intimate, so prior to the event. Yeah, not waiting till you're actually in bed together. Mm. Yeah, Trying to meet in the middle. So if you do vary massively on sex drives or what each other like, then try and come up with some compromises. Be creative. Creative and curious. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us for this conversation on how we can use communication during intimacy. Please on the link below and fill in the survey would be awesome. And if you do that, you get to access our online course. Also check out our YouTube and Facebook. And please tune in next time for... A really tricky topic, using communication in conflict. See you then. See you then. 
Thanks for listening. Please subscribe and follow us. And check out our website at rekindlingrelationships.com. Bye for now. See ya.